Assalamu alaikum everyone, hope you're all doing well. If you are new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about Trichomonas vaginalis. But a quick overview is, it is a protozoan parasite. It is uninucleate. It lives in genital organs of both men and women. It is responsible for causing trichomoniasis. At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to describe morphology of Trichomonas vaginalis, its life cycle, habitat and transmission, epidemiology, pathogenesis, clinical findings, laboratory diagnosis, immunity, treatment, and finally the prevention. Let's begin the lecture in detail. First, we will discuss the morphology of Trichomonas vaginalis. Trophozoite. It is a form of Trichomonas vaginalis. Its shape is pear or ovoid. Its size is about 10 into 7 micrometers. It has an exostyle that is a single situated in midline and runs posteriorly to the margin of the body. It has a nucleus that is single, elongated, and central. It has four anterior flagella and an undulating membrane that extends about two-thirds of its length. Cytosomes, a depression at the anterior end through which it ingests food particles. It exists only as trophozoid. There is no cyst form. But guys, there's a round form that exists shortly after the division of trophozoites. It has the same morphological structure as that of trophozoite except for its rounded shape. Next up is a life cycle of Trichomonas vaginalis. The life cycle of Trichomonas vaginalis consists of simple division by boundary fission under favorable conditions. The conditions include temperature of about 35 to 37 degrees, pH of 5.5 to 6.0, and the important thing is that it needs the less oxygen, means the lack of oxygen. It's diagrammatic representation, it lives in the genital organs of men and women. Its transmission occurs via sexual contact, um, its infective and diagnostic stage is its trophozoite. Habitat and transmission. Habitat. Primary location of the organism are the vagina and the prostate. It is found only in humans. There is no animal reservoir. Transmission occurs via sexual contact. Epidemiology. Trichomoniasis is one of the most common infections worldwide. Roughly 25 to 50 percent of the women in the United States harbor the organism. Asymptomatic infections are common in men and women. The frequency of symptomatic disease is highest among sexually active women in their 30s and lowest in their postmenopausal period. During pregnancy and menstrual period, there is a greater risk of trichomoniasis because of an increase in pH. Pathogenesis Infective agent is trophozoite. Incubation period it ranges from 3 to 28 days. The parasite Trichomonas vaginalis causes a highly prevalent sexually transmitted infection Trichomoniasis as an extracellular pathogen. The parasite mediates adherence to epithelial cells to colonize the human host. In addition, the parasite interferes with the host immune system and the vaginal microbiota. Modes of Trichomonas vaginalis pathogenesis include damage to host tissue mediated by parasite killing of the host cells, disruption of steady state vaginal microbial ecology, and, and eliciting inflammation by activating the host immune response. Clinical findings. 
In females, watery, foul-smelling, greenish vaginal discharge is seen. Volvular itching and burning is present. Vaginal and cervical mucosa is tendered, reddened, eroded, and petechial hemorrhages may be present there. Dysperunia. In males, this may be asymptomatic and male may serve as a carrier. In symptomatic cases, prostate, seminal vesicles, and urethra may be infected. The discharge is thin, white, urethral discharge, and dysuria may be present. Laboratory Diagnosis First, we will collect specimens like vaginal or urethral secretions or discharge, prostate secretions and semen. Then we will go for microscope. In a wet mount of vaginal discharge, the trophozoites have a typical jerky motion. Dried smear stained with hemotoxylin is observed under the microscope. For the confirmation of Trichomonas vaginalis, nucleic acid amplification tests, NATs, are often used because they are highly specific and sensitive. They is no serologic test. Serologic tests are usually for antibody. Then we will go for culture. A specimen may be inoculated in solid and fluid cell-free media. In tissue cultures, in the chick embryo and in simplified triptychase serum, may reveal organisms when the microscopic examination is negative. Immunity. Natural immunity, low pH in the low genital tract, provides some degree of protection. Infection confers no apparent acquired immunity, although over time, reinfections appear to cause less severe symptoms in women, suggesting that some resistance may have developed against this organism. Treatment. The treatment of choice is either tenidazole with the brand name Tenida Max or metronidazole with the brand name Flagel for both partners to prevent reinfection. Tenidazole is best tolerated. Maintenance of low pH of vagina is also helpful in treating that infection. Finally, the prevention. Maintenance of low pH of vagina is helpful. Condoms limit transmission, that is mechanical protection, simultaneous treatment of both sexual partners. No prophylactic drug or vaccine is available to prevent this infection. And that's it for today's lecture. I hope you really enjoyed it. So don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank